Welcome on this beautiful day. I can't believe you're inside. Um, but we appreciate you being here to talk about this wonderful, very funny movie. We have to thank Adam for being here because he just came in. Uh, you don't have to thank me. Off the plane. It's my well, pleasure. We thank you. So um, I'm going to start off with you, Susanna, and because how many people here have seen this film? Yay, mom and dad. <laughs> mom and dad over there. So give everybody the log line of uh, what Life Partners is. Um, okay. Well, the movie is basically about uh, two codependent. Uh, best friends approaching 30, one lesbian and one straight girl, and how they're sort of each other's platonic uh, loves of each other's lives until the straight girl meets the male love of her life, this guy. Uh, and he sort of creates this love triangle between the three of them uh, where it, it's just basically about how when you have a best friend and somebody gets into a relationship, things are awkward and you have to renegotiate the terms of that friendship. And we see the best friend a lot in Hollywood movies, but a lot of times it's been guys and, um, or the best friend is a girl. She's always like the fat one, the funny one, all those different things. So what your film is different is that you have them as fully formed human beings in a relationship with each other that is a primary relationship. So talk a little bit about how you and your writing partner um, put this story together and... Uh, just give us a little bit about uh, the friendship part. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, my writing partner, Joni, and I always talk about how we don't see a lot of movies uh, that really show female friendships for all the nuances that they have. Uh, they're amazingly passive aggressive, but also really intimate and emotional. And there are all these layers that I think women can relate to uh, in their friendships. And we just don't see them in movies. It's either the friend who's overly invested in the main character's love life and constantly like just sitting around with ice cream ready to give advice. Uh, or, you know, some sabotaging enemy type person. And they're just rarely realistic depictions of friendships that are sort of loving but also a little competitive or all those layers are there in a way that I think is, is particularly female. So we wanted to, to show that. And so we wanted to find a narrative that framed those issues but then also had some drive to it and, you know. So, Jordana, talk us a l little bit about how this movie came to you. I know you were involved with the development of it from the early stage when it was a one-act play. Is that correct? So talk a little bit about like what you saw in this play that became a movie. Um, yeah. So, Joni and Susanna wrote a one-act play for a play series. Um, that I did was not know it was a one-act play. I that? knew that it was a Sundance Lab. I guess I did. I guess I didn't. You didn't, you didn't come to our one act play. Yeah. <laughs> come on, I you? knew it was like incubated <laughs> there, but I didn't. I guess I didn't know it was a, an actual one act play. I have questions about that, but later because I think they might be boring. <laughs> Continue. Sorry. No, it was it was a one act play that was really inspired. Like their career was inspiring to even starting this one act play festival because I'd seen so many writer friends of mine that had so many scripts that were kind of in development hell at studios and never seen anything get made so we decided to produce a play because we would actually make it and be able to invite our parents and say look we're writers we're directors we're producers so they wrote it as a play and it just felt like it needed to have a life beyond just that people really loved it and we fell in love with these characters and and so I found them at a window when they were willing to you know, just kind of write something and play around. And they did the Sundance Writers Lab, and then I did the Sundance Producers Lab, and we developed it for, you know, a couple of years and made, made the movie, found our cast. And um, so, Adam, talk about how you came into this. I read that uh, you were the first actor to sign on for the film. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> did yeah, you get the by, green light? Yeah, but truly, like, a matter of days, I actually, um, I... Leighton was reading it and laughing and told me, like, I really like the script I'm reading. I'm like, and, you know, I, I, well, I asked what she was reading because she was laughing. And then, yeah, a couple of days later, I said, I, I just got offered this movie. <laughs> um, I'm going to do it. I haven't read it, but I already know you. I mean, you know, I already know you really like it. And so, so it's, I'm sure it's really good. And then um, I really liked it. And, you know, uh, it was a uh, pretty, pretty obvious uh, decision. 
Great. So the two actresses that you have, the uh, fantastic, were was when Leighton was reading it, was she reading it for the part that she got, or was it just? Um, at the time, it was. Um, sometimes you're just sort of asked to meet with actresses right. for either of the role. I mean, mm -hmm. I think agents put actors forth, especially if there's a movie that has more than one developed. It, it's not like one role is M more than one woman in a movie. Woman. Oh my god. Uh, so they, you know, had just sent the script to her uh -huh. to meet and talk about it. But but for me, one exciting thing is is taking an actor who's, you know, and like challenging them and if they're ready to be challenged to do something that's totally different from what they've done. So I always saw her playing the role that she played, which is very different from roles she's played before. But also, I, I just sensed that she'd be really good in the role that she played. Mm -hmm. um, and when we had the meeting, it was clear to me that, that that was the role that was more exciting to her, too. So I think we both felt like it will be a stretch, but one that she was well equipped to, to make. So talk about the biggest challenges in getting this movie done, I think, from all of your perspectives, would be really interesting for folks here. Are people here filmmakers, um, writers? Okay, so we're going to ask this question, and then we're going to show a clip, okay? okay? So let's do the challenges in getting the, the film done. Whichever challenge, I'm sure there were 1,600 of them. Um, I mean, this is mostly a question for Jordana, but I will say that, that over the years of writing, you know, at first on spec and then professionally with Joni, we learned a lot and developed a lot of confidence from the failures and from the heartbreaks that happened. And so all the projects we tried to make and then we would get and then take advice to wait or maybe there'll be a better offer if you hang on or you could get a bigger budget if you wait a year. Like we made those mistakes of not pulling the trigger on things or not scaling back the budget and sort of jumping at a chance uh, enough times that I think the years of challenges led us up to the point where we were able to be bolder with this movie. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I, that's what led us to Jordana in the first place and led us all to sort of be really confident about the decision to do it for whatever budget in whatever way mm -hmm. uh, right away. So Yeah, and with a small budget comes not a lot of days and not a lot of resources or luxuries. So I think for us, you know, we were really lucky to have just a cast that we were in love with and feel like we were all a family and everyone was as invested as, as we were to make this movie, which w it wouldn't have been possible on the budget that we had if we didn't, we didn't have, you know, this invested cast. And I also think just like along with the timing of it was just deciding to go even if we weren't ready because you always need more money and you always need more time and when you have an opportunity to make a project that you're passionate about I mean we were lucky because we just kind of mobilized and went in a tiny window that we had because they had a tv show and everyone's casting things so yeah and Adam did you have any challenges in terms of especially you were the guy coming between two life partners no, no, it was really, uh, honestly, yeah, it was just fun for me. Um, I mean, I really loved the part. I thought it was, it was so funny on the page, which is um, nice uh, and a relief because sometimes it's really up to you, and I don't always succeed. In fact, probably mostly I don't, but so many comedies, movies particularly more so than television, they ask you to, improv is fun, but if you have to do it, if you have to truly figure out how to make it funny because it's not, that's a challenge I don't like, and it's it's a lot more uh, uh, satisfying, and it's just a lot. It's a, you feel a lot more secure if the script's great, and then you can just do that. And then so so, anyways, no, I mean it was a good script, and it was, um, you know, we filmed it in Los Angeles where we all live, and so uh, with a bunch of great people. So I can't say no. It was kind of a, not to. I don't know, sound too flippant, but it was a breeze. <laughs> I have to say that movie you were in, In the Land of Women, is totally underappreciated. Oh, wow, thanks. I, I did really like that. Thanks. See? Other people liked it, too. <laughs> so let's um, roll the clip. It's so a nice chunk of the movie. <laughs> so many awkward moments in three minutes. <laughs> in three minute scene. So... Um, so you were the co-writer on this and also the director. So was there any moment where the director and the writer had a conflict in your head? Uh, you mean me and having an internal conflict or a conflict with my co-writer? Both. Or both. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, we'd, we'd sort of talked through how we wanted to execute 
the script. So I think by the time we got there, there's also so much adrenaline on an indie movie, especially with this pace, that I think those conflicts were a little bit, uh, you, we, there was no time to indulge really in that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think sometimes you have to let go of your image of what it's gonna be based on your idealizing what's on the page and just allow things to be fluid and allow for the surprises that happen on the day. And sometimes that, often that makes the movie much better if you can be a little bit flexible about how things are gonna actually turn out. And you always knew you wanted to direct this? Uh, yeah, definitely. And um, Joni didn't wanna? Joni and I, we have, I think, a great symbiotic partnership mm -hmm. where directing has, has been something I've wanted to do for years and years, and I've always sort of directed shorts. And then when I partnered up with Joni, we were writing together, and I would direct you know, shorts that we would write or web series. And that was something that I was always really interested in, sort of the obsessive type A director personality is something that is a little more me than her. Mm -hmm. um, and she's really good at sort of asking the bigger questions and the bigger picture stuff and sort of analyzing and talking through things, but then the person who wants to lie awake at night, like obsessing over the most minute details is me. So okay. <laughs> I was the natural director of the two of us, I think. And Adam, you work in TV and in film. Is there a difference to you and when you're working in the different mediums, do you prefer either one? Um, I think on the whole, television has better food. Okay. Um, um, <laughs> the budget's service. probably a little more. They just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, 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 not that it even shows up on the screen, just people get paid more. <laughs> um, um, but uh, other than that, no, I love, uh, the thing about movies that's so nice is the variety and you get to try on different uh, roles and work with different people and, um, and, and constantly switch it up. And at the same time, television's great for one thing. There's you know, job security, and it's nice to know, it's nice to have your schedule a little planned out. No, you don't have to go hunt for a job necessarily. Um, but creatively, uh, I think they're both interesting. I mean, to know a character and be comfortable in it and then have them, have that character evolve is, is great, and then to take on a new role and, and, and kind of by the seat of your pants and figure out how you want to do it right as you go is, um, is its own thing. Uh, so, uh, I don't even know, and where's the line anymore these days? I mean, honestly, like, <laughs> I mean, this is a whole other discussion, and it's a pretty obvious one, but still, I just think it, there almost is no difference. It's true. Um, and Jordana, you really work hard to develop scripts, and so talk a little bit about um, your process and, and why it's so important to like, get in at the beginning um, to help something get along, move along. I mean, I think that as a producer, you are looking for, you have to read a script looking for different things than, than a writer is doing, which is, you know, how am I going to make this movie? Not just finding a story that you're really, really passionate about and developing a great story, which I had, you know, complete faith that Joni and Susanna would always get there, but having something that was makeable and that we could make sure we always had an audience for is something you kind of have to keep in mind from the beginning, which is why I think it's helpful to have a creative producer on board, you know, in an earlier stage of a project. Right. So you were like really integrated into the whole process. And a lot of times we, you don't, people don't have that. So that's right. a big help. That's cool. It helps to work with your best friend too for that. Yeah. Yeah. You too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Nice. So that was fun too. So um, I read, Susanna, that you were inspired by um, Nicole Hall of, Hall of Center's Walking and Talking. Have people seen that movie, Walking and Talking? That's the first of her. One. We got one. It's the first of her this guy kind gets of it. like. You get it. I, I say she basically has well, charted an entire generation. Right. Enough said was her last movie. That, right. That, yeah. To, yeah. If anyone. Walking and amazing. Talking and. Um, um, I'm not going to remember all of them. But that was the first one. Anne Heche and Catherine Keener, who's like her muse. And so... Friends of money, please give. A lot of obsession yeah, with money. Yeah. I like it. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Lovely Thank you for movie. remembering all her movies. Um, so talk a little bit about how the movie inspired you and how um, that kind of like the genre of the... And maybe you'll have a whole... Gen chart another generation. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> uh, I mean, we... Joni and I both had been fans of the movie for years before we even met. Uh, and 
I think what I loved about it was just that the characters, they're two real, smart, interesting women who are not always likable, but they're always lovable, mm -hmm. uh, which is something that just felt really relatable and and I appreciated that the movie is funny enough and edgy enough that it's not like a drag for guys to watch it. Like they're not like, oh, this movie about women is so boring. They go and see the movie, they're like, oh, it's actually really funny. These women are kind of funny and wry and smart and it, it feels like a movie that anyone can acknowledge is really entertaining. Um, and at the same time, it has some really specific emotional truths to it that I think women particularly can relate to. It just was the truest friendship story, and I think it really does hold up. And anytime you, we, Joni and I would talk to like a studio executive or something about what movies they loved, and we'd mention that every single one of them loved it, and then went on to say, "Oh yeah, like we wish we could make that here, but you know it, that movie was made so long ago." And um, it seems like think movies have gone back to that now, kind of small. Yeah, I think that actually the, the irony of studios not making character-driven, relationship-driven movies anymore is that the, the plus side of that is that they now are relegated to the indie space where, you know, movies are more makeable and cheaper to make than ever before. So people can bring those stories, like, into reality with a really distinct, clear vision in a way that if they were getting diluted along the studio development road, they they wouldn't be that specific by the time they got to the screen. So I think just the fact that like we don't even have the opportunity to make even the Hollywood version of this anymore uh, means that we have to make it as an indie and then we can make it the way we want. Even which is Nancy good Myers can't make that anymore. Right, and it, yeah, and I think it's it's produced an opportunity for better, small, real movies that have a real voice. So Jordana, talk to us a little bit about, and we're gonna go to questions of the audience, talk to us a little bit about what's the next step for this movie? You've had your world premiere last night. Um, People are beating down the doors to buy did, it. We did, yeah. So, so what's the next step? Um, the next step is to find distribution so that we can reach our audience. Um, and there's, you know, many models of distribution that we are open to and thinking about. And, you know, but that's kind of, the festival's been amazing and it's great. But, you know, and we we'll, we plan on doing others, but we want to find a distribution partner um, that will get it out into the world. It's got to be a challenge because there's just so many different kinds of options with, to think about, you know, is it a day and date? Is it, via, you know, all these different things that I'm sure is in everybody's life now. It's just, you know, it's good and bad because you have just so many things to think about and how do you make your, your nut back and... And do you have, um, you know, the experiences that movies that you're on and all these different kinds of things? I mean, you, you come in and, and you act, but I'm sure it's like you want your movie to be seen. Yeah, you do. And it, it's the nice thing about, you know, video on demand now is, I mean, it's nice to have it in a few theaters or a handful or a lot. But in a way, that just feels like a prestige kind of thing and the truth is still by far the most the majority of people will see it at home unless it's a real event movie um and and so it's okay actually i kind of i kind of don't mind it i feel like probably more people see at least some of the stuff i've done because of it so um um yeah i mean i was i don't know how many people saw it but yeah it's it's, it's so different i mean i just did a movie and it was vimeo's first feature length release and so um there's a lot of I just did a pilot for Amazon. Like, it, you know, it, there's a lot of new companies trying Amazing. stuff. And that's kind of exciting, too. I mean, to be at the forefront of, you know, the emerging technology or a new company trying something is also kind of interesting. I remember I was alive when movie people wouldn't do TV. I yeah, mean, I know, I know. It was, you know, they were like, no. Yeah, and yeah, now, yeah. I mean, everything is so different. So um, why don't we, do you want to show the other clip and then go to the audience? Okay, let's do that. So last question before we go into the audience. So Leighton and Jillian didn't know each other, but they met and they became like best friends, like really quickly, right? So that must have been, shoo. Yeah, no, it was, it was great. Um, I, I've been thinking about this a lot just in terms of um, what the casting process is like. And it's kind of like uh, matchmaking, like professional matchmaking, where the goal is to bring two people together that are gonna have really good chemistry and you have to hire them before you really know for sure. 
Uh, and so it's just your best guess if you sit down with an actor whether sort of you have to size them up and say what what makes this person tick and both of these girls were grounded super smart really um, thoughtful analytical um, down-to-earth women living in a crazy uh, town and crazy industry so I was like oh, I kind of suspect that you guys would uh, would have a lot to talk about and ultimately be able to create that kind of chemistry but it's it's hard I think Casting a, a romantic movie or a romantic pair is no different than that. So, yeah. They, but we really lucked out. I mean, within a day, they had their own little language, and they were bringing a lot of nuances to the friendship, I think. That's terrific. So, audience members. Um, this is for Susanna. Um, in regards to the friendship in the movie, were there any, like, conversations or scenes that actually came from personal experience? That uh, no, had? none. Not <laughs> one. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Joni and I always try to, we're sorry, were you done? Okay, uh, <laughs> uh, Joni and I always try to bring a lot of our personal experiences and, um, you know, the sort of graveyard of ex-girlfriends and boyfriends that we've had always find their way onto the page for us. Um, and so a lot of these moments and conversations and anecdotes are, are definitely inspired by, by our lives and our friendships and our friendships with other people and... At the same time, the challenge for us is always, you know, how do we create a narrative that doesn't just feel like these characters are living out something that literally happened to us and it's not that interesting to watch because we just wrote it down because it happened to us. So it's like creating an actual story that's compelling and characters having arcs that aren't exactly, you know, what we've experienced but still feel personal and real was, is always the challenge for us since we do start at this incredibly personal place. All right, so give us, like, what was the one scene in there that, like, came from your life? Oh, um, I definitely subjected her to trying to watch America's Next Top Model with different lame boyfriends I had. Oh, my God. Um, and she was, she was into the show or was not? And, and, and uh, well, I mean, Joni and I were extremely invested okay, in the okay. show. Okay, okay, so it was, all right. Uh, yeah. So you say subjected her, you mean subjected the guy. I subjected her to having Making to watch it with, with a lame guy chiming in. Hi, um, I'm seeing Life Partners story. I'm very excited. Um, I've come over to New York from England to do research on women in media. And I was wondering, obviously you've got you two who are amazing producers and in this film. And I was wondering if you feel that there's enough women in the media. Um, uh, I mean, in media, maybe. In the film industry, no. no. Uh, I think... I mean, not even in media. Not even in media. But, I mean, Jordana has been involved in several, like, fellowships and programs that specifically deal with this topic. So I'm going to let her take this one. I mean, no. You know, no is the answer, I think. I think that um, we are trying to increase that number and trying to figure out how that happens, I think that there's a um, misunderstanding that it's getting better, but if you statistically look at how many female directors have you know, made movies that are in the top 200 in the box office, it's, I think there's three that are women. Six percent. Six percent, yeah. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a problem, but I think it's part of a bigger problem you know, that extends outside of the industry as, as well. And I think in terms of like, uh, just as a director, I think just judging from my own experience and it taking a really long time for me to feel confident enough to take the leap of actually pulling the trigger on a movie, I, I know that part of that like, is gendered, even though I never thought of it that way. Just the uh, amount of people who were encouraging me to wait or like learn for longer. And then my male friends who are writers were being encouraged by everybody from their friends to their agents to older directors to like direct their first movie and do all of that when we were all like in our mid 20s and I was getting a lot of like one day Why maybe you can you do that more yeah. yeah yeah and I think it, and it wasn't like presented as a pat on the head little girl right. thing but I think ultimately that that that's ultimately what it was and I think that if we can talk more about that openly not in a bitter man-hating way but just talk about it uh it will help because I think people just need to know that that's something that happens that they have to just be aware of like and I have a few friends who have just recently made their first movies, uh, female directors, and we, we talk about these issues all the time. We call each other for advice, and sometimes we'll find ourselves saying, would, would, they, would my investors talk that way to a guy? Or, you, you know, and 
the answer is often no. And we were lucky enough to work with, you know, a really wonderful financier who, you know, two women and two uh, men and women who really are super excited about the fact that this is so female driven. Uh, but I know that that's not the way that the industry is uh, organized a lot of the time. And it's hard for women when they feel others doubting them to push through that, I think, because we're encouraged to need approval and need people to tell us that they like us and all of those things can get in the way of you know taking control of the situation I guess for lack of a better word. And remember word. it's not a zero sum game. If you are successful doesn't mean the next woman can't be successful. If you're successful it makes more opportunities for yeah, the women certainly. to be successful. Right. I think mentorship is a part of you know a part of the problem and I think women need to also help other women to make yeah. that happen. And I think that like when seeking, you know, a mentor or a sponsor or whatever, like it, it does seem like as much as it's great to have these like initiatives for women helping women, it's al it's also great to cross those gender lines too and seek a mentor who's a guy or for a young male filmmaker who makes, you know, films that are more in the subject matter of a female filmmaker he looks up to to seek her help out and not keep things so stratified. I think it, it's going to help make that a little bit more fluid. So the film seems to engender some degree of improvisation. Was there? And can you talk about uh, how you worked with your actors and how the actors worked with the director to do that or put yeah. in their own input? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, there actually wasn't that much. I mean, to be quite honest, uh, maybe possibly 5%, uh, truly, like maybe, maybe. Um, um, yeah, it was pretty, pretty tightly scripted and... Um, um, yeah, like I said, you know, earlier there wasn't really the need, um, but you know, I think occasionally we would we would change something or throw in a little extra tidbit. But it definitely, and I think you can tell even watching it, it you know, there's a definite rhythm to it um, that uh, it isn't just like we're just coming up with, we're just riffing. There's definitely not a lot of riffing. I, <laughs> I can I can say that. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's a mix. It, it, we definitely worked on the script and wanted it to feel like we want the actors to feel like they could inhabit these roles and not have the pressure to have to create something. And also I think sometimes with really improv heavy movies, you just kind of feel like the actors are just casually riffing, like Adam was saying, and they're not necessarily in character. And it's just become sort of people hanging out and being funny. And it, we didn't want that. Uh, but at the same time, I think we maybe just by virtue of the fact that Joni and I have gone through so many like notes and development processes with other projects. We are not precious about people telling us that a line doesn't work or words feel weird or an actor doesn't connect with something. And the ability to be flexible about that, I think, is really important. So it's a combination of things. And I think for different actors, they needed or, or were excited to add little tidbits of their own, more or less, depending on what their backgrounds are. I, just I added some stuff, but I think that it's all cut out. You, uh, yeah. <laughs> How many days did you shoot for? No, you had what? How many days did you shoot? We shot for about 20 days, and then we, yeah, about 20 days. It's tight. Yeah, it was tight. An audience member? Hi, um, since the topic of video on demand came up, as, I mean, any of you can ask, answer it, but as a director, if you had your preference of like assuming that people would see the movie no matter what, would you prefer people to go and experience it in a movie theater, or would you be more like, you know, like David Lynch, how he's like, how he had that video about how awful it is that people are watching it on their phones. Or would you just be like, as long as people are watching it and enjoying it, you know, it's okay if they watch it on video on demand? I mean, I think just as somebody who's wanted to direct for so long, that they, that answer has changed over the years. Um, just because when, when I started out wanting to do this, I had these dreams of making movies that people could go and see in the theater. And it was, like Adam was saying, that's sort of the way it used to be in a way that now it's not. Um, and I know, for instance, like I have a 25-year-old sister living in Arizona in the middle of nowhere, and she's not going to go to an art house cinema and see anything because there isn't one there. And she wouldn't know about this. And you know, But she would download something on iTunes and watch it. At the same time, I do think there's a little bit of a prestige factor to having it in the theater, and that would be great. I just think that whatever gets the movie out there to as many people as possible that might relate to it is is really the best scenario for us, and whatever that means. Also, of all the, I mean, I guess a lot of emotions are communal, but laughter to me, almost more than any of them, is infectious, and, you know, it's so audible, and so to share that with an audience, you know, I just think it's contagious, and it, 
it's nice to see a comedy in a packed house if you can. Any movie, really, but yeah. but a comedy which you all can kind of laugh at together is kind of great. Yeah, it would be great. I mean, it it's great when you're in a community that does have a culture of going out to the movies and having that. And it, there is something a little. We are like mourning the sort of transition out of that a, a little bit, I think, still. But I would love to have a combination of the two. I would love to have it, you know, accessible in that way for people who really love that experience, and then also downloadable to people like my sister who don't. Don't spend nine dollars going to you know wherever. And don't have the access to and it. And don't either. have the access to or to would even hear about a movie mm-hmm. that was you know. Eighty percent of all movies are seen in multiplexes, and the movies that are in multiplexes are the big event movies. Yeah, and, 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 yeah. and in fairness, I mean, you know, not that hundred million dollars doesn't mean anything, except that there's size up there. You know, right. I mean, there is money on the screen that I don't know. <laughs> they're leveling a city and, and maybe right. you need to see that <laughs> yeah hi guys hello congratulations first of all um, I'm Thank just you. really curious about your casting process it sort of seems like from what you said that you kind of knew in advance the actors that you wanted to play the roles but I was wondering in addition to sending out the scripts to certain actors did you also work with a casting director and see you know like multiple people for it we did. I mean, we, we, Joni and I have a hard, it's, it's hard to take the leap of faith of just offering a role to an actor that you have no personal relationship with at all and haven't even yeah. had a coffee with. Um, uh, but, but, you know. It's the power it, <laughs> I wield. As a man. Um, in, in Adam's case, we actually had, you know, talked about working with him on projects before, although we never met him. I was attached to a movie that they wrote. Years, eight years ago. ago. One of the aforementioned heartbreaks that I yeah, talked about yeah. earlier. That someone else was going to direct. So I didn't meet you guys on it. Right. But, uh, but I, yeah, I was attached for a while. Yeah. I mean, we, we had information about him, you know, sort of liking our stuff and we liked him. And so it felt like that didn't feel like as risky. But especially for the two girls, just, you know, we, we just wanted to meet both of them. And we met other people in the process of casting too. And we worked with amazing casting directors in that regard. But when you get in, into sort of, casting bigger parts for the lead in a film and you want to make your investors happy too, you do end up with a shorter list of people who who you're meeting with. Uh, it's not like a wide you know, audition process or anything like that. We didn't, just to add to that, we had amazing casting directors, but when you're doing an independent film um, and you're casting movie stars in your, in your film, you usually cast those you know, without the casting director because you have to kind of build from the ground up and then the casting director comes on oftentimes to cast a lot of the other roles and they have great ideas for them that you know we don't think about on our own yeah and I actually really enjoy the process of it can be exhausting but the process of meeting like more actors than you're going to need to cast and just sort of as many as I have the energy for just because you were always I'm always surprised you know by what they bring or people who you know from one specific kind of role that their pigeonhole is always playing and then you meet them and they're so different from what you would have thought and it's it leads to some of the best most exciting like choices i think in general so i I don't know so yeah it's a combination of of the two things i think hi so excited to see this tomorrow um my question is about you had mentioned that you were fitting this in in between other things and i was just curious you know what other things you were juggling this with and what that was like you know were were your tensions divided what kind of challenges were there associated with that um well uh there was a challenge with this particular shoot and the reason that we sort of um mobilized to make it so quickly was that my writing partner and i uh worked on this pilot uh which you also worked on, which is how I know you. Um, and uh, and <laughs> it, we have uh, a show that's premiering on ABC Family on June 10th. Yay. Uh, Joni and I. So Say the name. Check it out. It's called Chasing Life. It's about a girl in her 20s who gets diagnosed with cancer, but she's sort of, you know. Uh, and are you um, executive producer or showrunner? Yeah, we're executive producers together. We're not, and, and we're not running and showrunners. We, we're running it with uh, a showrunner that we brought on, Great. Uh, too. But that happened around the same time and, and after years of like spotty, inconsistent employment, which is sort of the way freelancing works, um, we had just the irony of two opportunities that sort of seem to be moving forward at the same time. ABC Family seems to be the place where we can see young women. I mean, it's amazing, the shows that they have on there. Yeah, I mean, for us, we've always wanted to 
to do like a classic like Bedford Falls 90s mm -hmm. like you know my so-called life Felicity 30 something type show which we don't ever see anymore anyway so this w to us we were like okay if we can do that tone anyone that will let us do that tone and one one network you that should just they, say we my so-called life a lot and when you're pitching we when frequent, you're talking we about frequently this do yeah. okay I'm gonna um, watch it now but no we so we were doing that and, and weirdly enough it was like sort of just this embarrassment of riches slash, slash really stressful time where the pilot got picked up and then the show was sort of hovering on the verge of getting greenlit as we were preparing to make the movie. So, you know, after waiting so long to make a movie and having a movie financed, we, we did have to deal with the stress of the minute they pick up the show, they could say, okay, next week you have to start writing 20 episodes. And meanwhile, I was meeting all, all of my crew and cast and telling them to turn down other jobs to do the movie. So it she was, was also really editing, like wow, all through the night while she was in a writer's room all through the day. So it was, it was crazy. There was really no choice. But I think that that was a scenario where, not to bring it back to the woman thing again, but that was a scenario where a lot of people were like, "Hey, maybe one thing at a time." And it's so great you have the show. And are you sure you really? And it's true that I didn't like lead a balanced life for eight or nine months. But I, I would. I'm so glad that I just pushed through it and lived in a ridiculous way. you have now. No, it's great, you, but it, it was, two things it was definitely like a conversation that I feel like knowing a lot of male writers who are just encouraged to take on anything and everything and, oh, we'll work out the dates, we'll figure it out, like, pile it on. And that wasn't uniformly what people were saying to me, which I noticed. And, you know, partly through Jordana's support and just the sheer force of will, uh, we just decided to do it anyway. But it was a hard... It's been like a hard year in some Impressive. ways. Impressive. So everyone's going to go see Life Partners. It's playing in the Tribeca Film Festival. And Thank then you guys so much for coming. You. Yeah. You're going to yeah. watch our show. Do you have anything coming up that you want to tell people about besides Life Partners? Just, you know. You know, just, just life. Stop. Life, okay. Just life. Watch his life. And uh, Jordana, congratulations, all of you. Thank you.